Hey guys, what's up? Uh, Scott, Mark 2 Golf Stories here once again. Just got a bit of an update um, with the engine. So I'm gonna tell you all about it now. You remember, remember at the end of the last episode, I told you that uh, it was really tight to turn over. Well, we found a reason why. This is feeling very tight and I am very nervous. I'm not sure how tight this should be. That's just a bolt. What's moving? The pistons. Are they? We rebuilt the engine, uh, we were turning it over and it was very tight. I think it took between 35, between 20 and 35 newton meters to turn the engine over. Um, but if we left it for a day, came back to it, it would take us over 100 newton meters, you know, a big extension on a bar to turn the engine over. And it seems to get very tight when it hit one spot. We loosened off the nuts on the conrod cap on piston one, and it you know it would turn over a lot easier. We tightened it up once again, 100 newton meters to turn it over. It was very stiff. You have to put a lot of effort into it. Um, took it back to the head shop. They had a look at it, and they determined that what we had done was actually swapped the caps around on the conrods one and two. So these two caps you may see now are actually numbered up one, two three, four. That's because these caps got mixed up when we took the pistons off. And you know, if you're putting new, new caps on and new bearings, it doesn't really matter, but we were re reusing these caps and bearings. And what I was doing, it was putting a tight spot on because the wear was different, which meant when we turned the engine over, it was grinding on it and getting very stiff. So as a result, we've had to get new bearings for these. So yeah, that was the problem. And as you'll see, uh, now you can turn it over. Normal ratchet on really easily. You know, that's a hell of a lot less than 25 or 35 newton meters and a shed ton less than 100. So that is good. We are happy with that. Look how easy that's turning over now. Fucking dream. But there was one more thing we noticed uh, when we were took the engine out and started working on it. And that is right here. Let's see if we can get in close enough to have a proper look, eh? This is where the engine number is. And mine, it's like it's been hacked at. It's barely legible. Yeah, I did manage to decipher the numbers um, and I checked them against the log book and they were completely different. Which meant this car has had its engine swapped out at some point. It seemed a bit shady, the fact these are all chipped off. Anyway, I did the right thing. I called the police, um, notified them. They didn't really seem that bothered. They said people change engines in cars all the time. Nothing to worry about. Just informed DVLA. I've done that. Six weeks later, got my V5C back with the correct engine number on. So everything ever happens. Insurance can't wiggle out of it. Anyway, that's just a short update to let you know what happened to the engine, um, what's been going on. If you found it useful, please consider dropping a like, click on subscribe. The next job will be to put the head on the engine, get the belts on, get it all timed up, and then we'll talk about getting the clutch on, get the gearbox on, get it back in the car. So we're getting there. Thanks for watching. Cheers. See you next video soon. Bye bye.